Tunes. 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 And Bruce. And Bruce. We're thoughts. We do. Listen to thoughts. Listen to tunes. Drink, drink some Bruce. Drink some Bruce. We're thoughts. We're do. Listen to thoughts. Listen to tunes. And drink some Bruce. And drink some Bruce. Can do it? All right. Welcome to dudes, tunes, and beers and brews, dude. Come, Come on, on, man. First show, you have already one done this? job. Come on, Travis. <laughs> well, yeah, this is dudes, tunes, and brews. This is episode three. Oh, I'm Harley Page. I'm Josh Broman, and our guest this evening is the Travis one. Manning. Yeah. Travis Manning. That's right. He's a drummer. Seasoned, a seasoned regional regional drummer. Seasoned. Like, He's a regional drummer too. Yeah. Seasoned yeah. with cayenne and uh, black pepper. Cracked. Paprika. Paprika. Crack cocaine. <laughs> the paprika of the rainforest. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Paprika. Anyways, this is episode three. We're going to hang out with Travis this evening, discuss some things, try some new beers that he has brought us, and uh, listen to an album that uh, he brought and chose himself. It's a, a band called Foxy Shazam. When, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the band? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, touring band back in the early 2000s that were you know, great for teenagers and the like. Uh, if you recall correctly, our angsty minds were right, right, in the, right in the right space for it. Yes, and they uh, opened for bands like Mindless Self Indulgence and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, Those are the best. Yeah. So cool, dude. Oh, aren't they from Ohio? Cleveland, I think. Cleveland or Cincinnati, one of those shitty places. I think Cleveland's <laughs> where, like, uh... A lot of bands got their start in Cleveland. Yeah, who's the first uh, of the month? I want to say Joe Walsh and the James Gang got their start in what? Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Black Bone, Dolly Murder comes from Cleveland. Someone else was... Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh, crap. Cleveland really? is the city. Uh, yeah. Cleveland, Cleveland rocks, man. Yeah, Cleveland dude. rocks. Man, I, that's, that's cool. We need to go. We need to take the show on the road to Cleveland. I've never been to Cleveland. That's the one that's up north by the lake, right? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a geography guy. Am I a guy. freaking Atlas? Who cares? <laughs> well, well, yeah, yeah. well, that's my neighbor's business. Oh, right? Man. Oh, man. Anyways. So, so the uh, trilogy, man. The trilogy is complete. The trilogy. Three episodes. Three episodes. That's Plus right. Plus a lost scenario. A lost, uh, the, the original lost pilot, yes. We, uh... We tried to get through the Genesis album. Tried to. We can't dance. Which someone on our, our, our Facebook won the uh, the Genesis album. But Lisa they, Anderson, if you're listening to They his. have not yet claimed the prize. Please contact us at dudestunesandbrews at gmail.com to uh, claim your prize. Hey, and speaking of prizes, I actually uh, have created a new prize box. Really? We can, uh, maybe we can uh, spit some of those and send those out to the people Sounds interesting. Sounds we'll get interesting. to that a little further in the program. Yeah, but uh, right now I can see the frost uh, slowly melting oh, away from my frosty mug. Frosty mug. These have been in the freezer for three days. Three Ooh. days. This is going to be nice. This is. Yes. All right. Travis brought us Blueberry Maple Stout by Saga Tuck Brewing Company. That's Michigan. Si, senor. Uh, tell us a little bit about this Blueberry Maple deliciousness. Well, I bought it at the uh, uh, liquor store up the street. I've never had it before, and I'm pretty excited to try it myself. Cool. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a brown bottle with looks like a lumberjack with a giant beer in his hand. A giant stack of pancakes, too. That's, why, that's what drew me to this beer. I, that's why I would have chose it, just because of the graphic. Beautiful smile. He's, Be he's very happy that he has beer and pancakes. Yes. Who wouldn't? So. Stack of four pancakes. <laughs> and those are those are the size of the plate. Those are plate size. That's a man-sized pancake. That's a lumberjack-sized stack. Blueberry maple, boys. Hey, I'll hit that with an axe, boys. So let's, uh, let's crack these open together. And, All right. Uh, we'll uh, give them a taste. They're, I think oh. they're, pri uh, they're pry -offs. I was trying to... Are the prize? The pry-offs, dude. I was trying to pry it off with my man... My oh, man gosh, knuckles. Yeah. My man meat. All right. There we go. There Harley's we go. always looking out for his little brother. <laughs> and we're going to pour these into our frosty mugs, and uh, we'll take a taste and uh, tell you about them. Ooh, look at that. Oh, I love it. Love the body, the uh, heaviness of it. It's very dark. Mm. Nice and dark. Oh, it almost it smell too. It almost looks like a root beer. Well, since oh. we didn't get much of a pop on these tops, uh, can we get a little clank action here? Cheers, All boys. Right. Roast. Mm. It's not overwhelming either. Not, I like it. It tastes, it, it, I mean, blueberries and maple. It, the maple's very subdued. I was expecting it to be very sweet. It still has more of just that stout taste, which is really nice. Yeah, very much. It's a stout with some subtle flavorings as opposed to... Well, subtle flavorings with some stout? Yeah, exactly. It exactly. comes at you pretty quick with the flavor. It does. But it doesn't linger. 
the end of the uh, you get the the boldness of it almost like a dark chocolatey you know? yeah very full it, and it holds the sweetness we yeah. were talking about dark chocolate and fruits or yeah, cranberries and bananas yeah it's got that whole thing yeah. going on with it but it's very bright in the beginning very bright and mellow but it's still dark i like it yeah on a scale of one two five brews what would you give this brew it depends on why i'm drinking true a brew like this am i looking for a dessert beer something that i've had maybe one or two of mm -hmm. i would i would definitely give this four brews Four brews, um, nice. if i'm if it's something that i don't want something to fill me up mm -hmm. then yeah i'd probably go with a lower brew system on that maybe a 3.5 yeah taste wise it's fantastic though it, it does have a good flavor but it's uh stands out on its own but yeah yeah I, I gotta say my palate's probably not as refined as your guys's but uh I, I could definitely see myself drinking this beer maybe with uh Maybe with some seafood or something like that. I feel like that would go well. As, as contradictory as the maple and blueberry mm -hmm. with seafood sounds, the, the tastes are subtle enough and masked. Not masked, but enveloped, I'd describe it, by that stout mm -hmm. flavor. Probably be good with a good uh, crab. I can def definitely taste there a nice white fish. Mm -hmm. Sweetness on the on the meat. That's what I was thinking with some tilapia or something. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, one to five brews, what would you give that one? Solid. Three and a half brews. I'm gonna go three and a half brews. Not bad. bad noble, enough. noble. Uh, yeah, I like it. I think it's uh, it's a decent beer. Would I go out of my way to buy it? Probably not. But if a friend was like, "Hey, I got these beers," I'm like, yeah, I drink one. It's ironic that that's what happened, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and but, uh, uh, it, it, I mean, it's still good. Uh, I had a word in my head I was gonna use for it, but I, I, it escapes me now. But um, yeah, it's it's a solid beer, good flavor, something different. If if you got a night out and you want to try something different, it's definitely something to pick up. It's not gonna be you know something that disappoints. I mean, you you you're either gonna like it or not. But uh, probably gonna win with the ladies though in terms of yeah. trying one. If yeah. you're going, if you're going, you yeah. went to the party pack down the this street. This is definitely here. an approachable beer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this, go to party pack. You can fill your little sixer, sneak one of these in there. It's got that wine kind mm -hmm. of trying it out feel to it. Sure. Yeah, the ladies would like that for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I like the line of Kugels. Absolutely. I could see that. Berry yeah. or something. It definitely has like a very... You ever just drink Hershey's syrup from the can? Yes. It kind of tastes like that. Straight is that, up? Is that a thing? It's a fat guy thing. The straight up from the squeezy... The, no, not the squeezy. The from metal, the can. The metal you can. Puncture it, you gotta puncture it and yeah. then pour it. No, I don't think I've ever experienced the can. Uh, is it like an oil can? No, it, kind of. It's just a, it's it just like, like a standard fifteen ounce metal can or whatever the hell it is that peas and carrots. Oh, like, like a damn uh, like tomato. Yeah, but instead can. of taking the whole top off, you just take the thing and you yeah, you poke make a, a hole, hole and you make a little wow. hole on the other side for air. No, I've it's got a yellow cap and uh, these are strange times we live in. It's we just we syrup. It's something different. We used to get it for ice cream when we were kids. That was our, our go-to. I bet the metal makes it taste wonderful. Maybe. Adds a little aluminum flavor. Yeah. It adds a little of that like bright zesty. Z exactly, in. like licking a key. Yeah. You know, on a nice hot day. <laughs> Everybody's putting nine volts on their tongues <laughs> right? again. That's a thing, right? Um. Anyways, um, where was I going with that? It's a very savory beer. That's a good word for it. Knowing what you're going for too. Third gulp on this bad boy. I really like it a lot. More. Yeah. First one, the name even tells you straight up. Blueberry, maple, stout. That's got all the flavors. And right yeah, I'm still like, hmm, I wonder what that's going to taste like. <laughs> and it totally tastes just like that. So, I mean, they're not lying to you. Yeah, at least they have a good name for you to yeah. Right. So, uh, I would give this, uh, I'd agree with Travis, give it a uh, solid three and a half brews. All right. We there goes. That. So, uh, we're going to uh, start the uh, CD. Yeah, the compact the, disc. The compact disc <laughs> that Travis provided this evening. Travis, he's too good for the stack. Travis looked through the stack, though. He had a few CDs. I uh, did. I did. You had a few CDs brought out. Well, what three CDs were those? Oh, I had, uh, what were they? Hanson. Hanson's <laughs> inaugural album. Spice Girls. Spice. I also had, uh, oh, I had American Pie soundtrack, but then I rejected that one summarily because... For good reasons. For good <laughs> reasons, and I'm, we're all just going to be happier for it. And I can't remember what the third was. Oh, it was one that I actually said I was uh, in on. I don't forgot. Nah, we'll pick it out later. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Foxy Shazam. Foxy Shazam. Shazam. Shazam with a, uh exclamation point. Yeah. Got to be classy like that, right? I have never heard this uh, album before, so uh, let's give it a listen. It's got a lot of different notes, a lot of different flavors, so just keep an open mind. Does it have any samba beats? Yes, and some very classy piano riffs. I like classy piano riffs. 
And they also sing about how heavy metal sucks and then rock and roll is dead. Well, like, technically. Technically. Actually, rock and roll ain't dead until Gene Simmons is dead. Like, like everyone else will die. Like, Gene Simmons will patent the name rock and roll somehow. Good uh, luck, man. He got some of that share on him. <laughs> I, I knew he owns the devil horns as well, yeah. Yeah, he claims that he started it. Yeah, yeah. Dio James was a joke. Dio summarily rolled over four or five times. But he doesn't even remember it because... You know, Gene does the I love you sign instead of this. No. He does. Really? Oh, no. Yeah, if you ever, like, watch him in concert, he does this. Well, let's move it here. What are you going to do, though? I mean, if you're Gene Simmons, you can do that almost ironically. He's an affectionate guy. You don't he get is. a tongue like that without showing a lot of affection. Yeah, well, affection. You, affection. Who's going to call Gene Simmons a poser? <laughs> For real, you know, like... Ronnie James Dio. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a different league of being able to say that. Okay. I bet old Ronnie was um, scrappy. Though. Rest in peace. Rest, yeah. rest in peace. Dr. Dio. See, I bet Dio was a scrappy son of a bitch. Well, I bet he was. I bet he had the best jokes. I mean, just listen. He was. I bet Dio could have been a comedian. Probably. And only so many people knew it. I mean, he was into like the whole mysticism, Dungeons and Dragons, Lord of the Rings stuff. Maybe he did get picked on back in the day. Oh, I'm sure he was little, right? Yo, yeah, he was yeah, a tiny yeah. guy. Tell. He was like five foot one, two or something. But that voice, man. <laughs> right. He's, they probably went to punch him in the face. He's like, don't hit me! <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, damn, do you know? I play guitar. <laughs> Boom, band started, and he's the man. Did you see him on Pick a Destiny? Tenacious D movie? Oh, absolutely. He oh. starts the destiny. Yeah, he, he started the destiny. Story. And you can tell he's still got it. Like, he's like, you, you see Ozzy on stage, you go to Ozfest, you see Ozzy on stage, he's still got it, he's old. Mm -hmm. He can still sing it though, he's still got the pipes, he's still got the voice, the it. Ronnie James Dio, till his last day, that man had the pipes. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, Black Sabbath revisited Heaven and Hell in like 2006, and they all got together at Madison Square, or one of the New York places, mm -hmm. and they played the whole Heaven and Hell album. And uh, Dio had it in 2006, all through. He's awesome. Yeah, was awesome. Good old still Dio. is. He still lives in spirit. Right. He's he's hanging with Lemmy and all the greats. He, Good old Lemmy. We have an episode of just all the all the ones we miss. Bowie. Dot dot dot, etc. Let's see. Uh, Prince. Prince was on the tip of the tongue. I was thinking of Prince when you were That's mentioning. That's where he's the first to be. <laughs> uh, Oh, if only. Now right. if we're talking about if I had stuff, eh, Prince would be okay. All right, so we're listening to Foxy Shazam. The album is called The Flamingo Trigger, and it is their debut studio album. It was released in uh, 2005, independently, and includes songs as uh, No Don't Shoot, The French Passion of Animality Opera. <laughs> Hearing you read these things off, so please continue. <laughs> Across the Golden Field and October Surf Suitcase Fish. Uh, the genre is a uh, post oh, hardcore. I listened to it on the way over. Oh, uh, and, uh, how was it sounding on the way it was over? Fine in the car. And, uh, it's this skipping. is uh, one of those blunders. It's the first time ever to happen on Dudes Tunes and Bros. Yeah. We're having a bit of a glitch with this. It, we, now That's this what happens when you cut. bring outside with sources. Well, when you outsource guess, things, everything goes Maybe, to should we should we switch to Hanson or something? I can take Hanson. I'll take Hanson over time. First time in Dudes, Tunes, and Brutes history, we're going to change the album. I've always been a trendsetter when it comes to ruining shit. Hey. I mean, shit's <laughs> ruined all the time. Uh, we're going to listen to a different record, because this one's skipping a little bit. And, uh, I wish I had one of those sound files for, like, you know, technical difficulties, like... Da, 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 well, it's a 10-hour... Ten hour video of Jeopardy music you can get online. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fairly certain that's uh, royalty free. <laughs> and with that, I think we should probably go ahead and go to a uh, sponsor. Or are we starting this album out now, Harley? Oh man, I guess we could squeeze in one of our, our sponsors right now uh, since we have a little bit of the downtime. boom guy just fell down. He's 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 really upset. Steve, it's okay. He doesn't look like he's breathing so well. <sighs> Technical difficulties. I hit the wrong button. There's, there's beer on my phone, so it's uh, it's not cooperating. Things got real on the set, folks. All right, so yeah, we're gonna take a quick commercial break and uh, take a word from our sponsor. Tired of feeling too fat? Hate when those weirdos stare when you eat? Then come down to the old 
little fat be gone warehouse where we'll suck the fat out for a nominal fee. You'll be looking good on the beach. Hell, we'll even get rid of the loose skin for you. Located right behind the Arby's, right next to the Ferguson and Ferguson Law Firm. So come on down to the Fat Be Gone Warehouse, you soon-to-be sexy son of a bitch. <laughs> All right, and we're back. That was uh, that was the, a quick commercial break from a sponsor. Fat be gone warehouse. They will uh, make you a soon-to-be sexy son of a bitch. You know, I hear they're running a special now, fifty percent off. Uh, you uh, buy one ass cheek refill, you get the second one for a uh... refill. Oh, you gotta have an initial ass fill for that coop in the work. So yeah, the you tuck 'em, we suck 'em deal. Yeah. Absolutely, uh, they've been doing that for uh, the past three Christmases. It's a good present to give to your like stepmom, or to your like whatever. You know, your girlfriend. Girlfriend, oh, yeah. Your girlfriend's aunt. Yeah, and then they got this whole thing going now where they, like, take one fats from another fats and put it in your lips and then, like, your hips and your tits. So they're just, like, reusing your own fat. It's yeah. genius when you think it about is. It. free real estate. That's right. And what's left, they make soap. There's no overhead. <laughs> Anyways. It's a little over ass, though. <laughs> <laughs> So we're gonna we had to change the album for uh, technical difficulties, but we're back now. We have a new album, one of the ones that uh, Travis picked the first time, and it's uh, Hanson, Middle of Nowhere. Middle of Nowhere. I have never heard this album. Um, oh, you're, you're in for a real treat here. Huh? I know Umbop, of course. It's their inaugural album, really. All the boys that are preteens at this point, and you're really getting the feel of the angsty, angsty kind of place that they were coming from. Right. The rich household. That. The rich household. Yeah, Mom yeah, still won't yeah. let me stay up past eleven. Oh gosh, horrible parents. They were so polite to those kids. They even said thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Who says thank you anymore? Here's your copy, sir. Yeah, go to hell. So, what's uh, what's going on with that music over there? Hanson. <laughs> Boomba, tell how the kid is for the kids. Is the boom guy dead? Boom guy's dead. He, he looks dead. Was he dead? He the was fine this? around five o'clock when he came in today. Shit. You let the guy guy you let the guy die on your watch. That's just good <laughs> killing him yourself. <laughs> hey, we had good health insurance here for a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, handsome. Here we go, handsome. We live nowhere. This is already rocking my socks. Oh, I already feel like the day is going to get better. Now, a lot of people thought that these were chicks. They look like chicks. You know, they're, they're like the Wachowski sisters. They, they started out that way, but they changed their mind halfway through. <laughs> Interesting thing about Zach Hansen, I believe, the middle one, he actually was in a band with the James Eha in the 2000s. And they actually did a group from the, the guitarist from the Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah. Oh, yeah. interesting. <clears throat> I heard about him playing in another, uh, another organization. It's not too bad. I mean, for what it's worth, it was actually kind of interesting because they're one of these groups that they're self made, mm -hmm. self produced. They've kind of done their own thing mm -hmm. at this point. They created their own label. Like, they're a pretty interesting thing. I mean, back in the day in middle school, I wouldn't have said that because <laughs> I actually liked having friends. But I don't know. You, there's kind of an age gap between us. So when you were, not, when you were talking about buying three copies of said album, <laughs> what was up with that? Yeah, uh, I was in elementary school. And I bought a copy, and I just got my, I remember I just got my first CD player, my mom. I found one in a garage sale. A portable CD player, but the batteries didn't work. You had to keep it plugged in. Which, this was before rechargeable batteries and everything, so... It's not like the thing was meant to be charged. It's just meant to be uh, played and enjoyed on your own at home. So, yeah, I only had a handful of CDs. Technotronic, Hanson, an Odyssey, of ACDC. Uh, <laughs> what was the first one? Technotronic. What's oh, bump the jam. Pump it up. <laughs> Why your feet are jumping? That's the one. 
That's one of the best things. Have you ever seen that music video? Yeah. Oh, dude, Absolutely. have you seen that music video? Probably. They were all clearly on ecstasy. It was, it was a very just raw video in so many ways. It almost is amateurish, but it's so cool. <laughs> it's not what I expected. Yeah. Yeah. It was a fun album, but I had bought this and a few others, you know, with my own little elementary school money. And when it broke, I bought a new copy. All and right. then again. Uh, like a year later. <laughs> so this is like your uh, your your white album. <clears throat> yeah, it sure is. If you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> middle of nowhere. I'm more mil- like middle of who gives a shit. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hanson. Middle of nowhere. Let's see, Travis. This is for you here. Middle of nowhere is the debut studio album by American pop group Hanson. All right, we have already uh, already discussed that. Okay. And uh, let's see here. Where's the love? It's not enough. Makes the world go round and round. This is the one, though. Oh, I remember this one. I saw this on the VH1 early morning, and I was like, "What is this? Who are these people?" I was like, "This is the first time I saw the drummer and thought he looks cool too." (laughs) This this may be the start of my drumming career right here. Is, is this how you started? Yeah. Hanson started your drumming career in, so, in, a, in, a, in some kind of way, yes. Which you Han- heard which, it here first, folks. Which Hanson played the drums? I want to think it's Nathan, Nathan Hanson. <laughs> Nathan? The youngest one. He was the youngest one. Oh, Eugene. Oh, he was the youngest yeah, one. He was yeah. my age. Yeah. <laughs> Herbie. Herbie. Okay. It was not Herbie. Herbie Hanson. It was not Herbie. Uh, Isaac? I, Isaac. Yeah, that right. Zach and Taylor. Zach's the one that inspired you. Yeah. And Isaac, right. Isaac the Hansen. guitar is the oldest one. Yeah, and then uh, Taylor, he's the pretty one, the little girl up front. Yeah, yeah, that's they're like the Eurositches. Yeah, yeah, except the sexy. <laughs> Good lord! I didn't mean that. I didn't Good mean that lord! Either. If you guys are listening here, just to accidentally you're in stitches. Uh, he meant that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I mean, there's nothing wrong with saying you mildly, you know. You're mildly attractive for a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes a man needs a massage, yeah, because he gets more into those uh, deep parts of your muscles. Yeah, that's, that's all what, the way in there. Yeah, that's why, you know, the old actors got rubbed down by dudes all the time in Hollywood. It's true. It's, it's just true. a couple guys hanging out. Just Bob guys. and Brando love to get rubbed down. Yeah, by uh, elbows crap. and chins. That's what he said. He said a good massage is elbows and chins. And the love of a good Maybe woman. a little bit of... <laughs> It's quality. It's quality. Uh, where's that hot brisket when you need it? Right. Hey, speaking of hot briskets, tonight we've got a special thing going on. We're going to try... Uh, yeah, I guess uh, we're going to do this tonight. Uh, everybody's been talking about it. We're looking at Everybody. You, Lisa Social media Anderson. is just filled with talk about this. I mean, in the trending line, Beyonce is under this. Beyonce? More like, who gives a shit? Right? Yeah, that's right. Anywho, after uh, after that said, uh, the Twinkie Wiener Sandwich. Yeah, I guess we're going to try this Twinkie Wiener Sandwich. All right, now I'm 45% more disconcerted with what you call it than with what it's actually going to be. <laughs> Did not name it. <laughs> Did not. <laughs> this goes back to our, 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 our the original pilot. Not that piece of crap you guys got. But, uh... <laughs> Genesis? Of course. That was... Of course. Uh, Weird Al made a movie in the 80s called UHF, oh God, and in this movie, he mentions the Twinkie Wiener Sandwich. His buddy is sad, and he's trying to cheer yeah. him up. He's like, hey, I made you a Twinkie Wiener Sandwich, and he's just like, I don't want it. And he goes and sits in a recliner or whatever, he's like eating it, but the uh, true way to eat it is you cut open a Twinkie, yeah. you flip it over to where you see the cream side, you exactly. cut it lengthwise, you shove a boiled hot dog into it, and you do just do a line of cheese whiz. Well, the truest way to eat it is how Weird Al does in the film. He dips it in milk and then takes a bite. Gross. Wait, so the wait. truest form of a Twinkie Wiener sandwich is dipped in milk and then take a bite. No, milk. I'm not doing that. No. One I, of us has to. I don't have milk on hand. Okay, okay. So we're kind of about the restrictions of that. But the, uh... Dip it in beer. We can dip it in some of this, uh, beer, actually. I, I'm actually okay with that, I guess, for some weird reason. That wouldn't be that bad. But the thing is, I checked the reviews online. There's it's reviews been done. for the Twinkie Wiener. Reviews. It's been done. They've taken the uh, original recipe and they've done, they've run with it, or, you know, whatever. I've decided instead of boiling the hot dog to grill it or pan sear 
the uh, meat. And it gives it more of a, brings out the saltiness and kind of caramelizes it a little it more. It steals in the juices. Uh, the thing I'm fearful on this concoction is the cheese whiz cream mixture. I think it's going to be too much of the uh, uh, fake sweetness of the cream and the fake salt of the thing. It's, it's, they're not very natural. They're so intense that I think they're going <clears> to <throat> almost overlay each other. It's not going to be a fun, sweet, salty like Doritos, Pepsi. Either that or they'll be so intense that it'll be like two orgasms overlapping each other. Right? Oh, ooh, that ooh. can make you poop your pants. You've made this intriguing, sir. Now you want to try it with the stout, <laughs> don't you? Yeah. I kind of do. I mean, we're already drinking sweet. Let's eat sweet. Well, um, let's do it. I can go and uh, get this concoction together. You boys can uh, discuss uh, what we're going to be doing. Life, the universe, and everything. Do your best Carl Sagan impression. <laughs> okay, okay. I can do that. Really? <laughs> the universe is a vast and unimaginable place. That's pretty good. Now, do you, do you also do David Attenborough? I, I do a terrible British <laughs> accent. I really do. It's easy to do a British. You just, you just talk and be boring. No, that doesn't work. Show me. You gotta, you gotta have to show me. It, it, it was mostly a joke. There's no illustration. When you put me on the spot, now I'm putting you on the spot. Put do me it. on. Do what? Do you do a boring British accent? Uh, You're so boring that you're British. That's a good one I used to do a long time ago. Oh, sorry, we got poop on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It will take quite a bit of time cleaning that off, eh? Quite a bit of time. <laughs> You've earned every day. I, I, I can see. You, I can see the point. <laughs> right? You can say anything, though, and it, it, it'd be okay. What about, uh, do your Australian accent for me. Let's Australian. See Australian. I haven't done an Australian But you got to differentiate from the British. The British. Well, my Australian's probably generic like everyone else's. Good day, mate. Eh? You want to go to the Outback Stakers? Don't you dare say shrimp on the barbie. I will say not shrimp say on that. the barbie and I swear we're no, going to fight. No, 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 <laughs> no. But you, but you can't do Australian without using their, their, their colloquialisms, their euphemisms. Like Vegemite and kangaroo. And... No, the, those are things that are from Australia. That's different than a colloquialism. <laughs> like shrimp on the barbie. Words. That's oh, a colloquialism. Okay, I got you. I got like, good day, mate. That's a colloquialism. Good day, mate. See that jelly with the Shayla? Sheila's one of them. That's what they call chicks. That is. That's that is. Chick. That is. That's also what you call some girls in America. <laughs> Her name oh, Sheila. Who named Sheila? Yeah, that's the ones. How'd you know? <laughs> I, 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 had a, I had a hunch. Call it a hunch. <laughs> okay, Jamaican. Jamaican. But don't say man a single time. What? This is the challenge. You, you can issue the next challenge. I'm going out of turn. Jamaican without the word mon. Joe wants some biscuits. <laughs> you know what I like? It. I like it. That was that was fairly on point. That all right. Okay. Oh, I wish we need shots. We need shots, and we'll take shots. That's gonna be a commemorative uh, commemorative episode. Well, well, it's gonna be liquor drunk. Uh, yeah, and then I'll be sleeping on the floor. Right. It's gonna you be called walk around me. It's gonna be called the sleepover. <laughs> it's your turn. Sure, you no. accent. I thought you were going to do a Jamaican without saying No, mine. I just gave you the Jamaican oh. without mine. Now it's oh. your turn. Can you do Baltimore? Baltimore. There's a Baltimore accent. What do, you, you, what do I look like? Some kind of freaking selfie? <laughs> I guess that I don't really... I, that's, that's the best I got. I have no frame of a Baltimore accent. Then why would you ask me? I, I was just... I was trying to be different, man. Do a Florida accent. Florida? I've never been to Florida. I don't know how they talk in Florida. You, you're from you're from America. You're from there. Okay. Hi. I'm from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. I can totally tell. It's Miami, right? <laughs> no. West Side. <laughs> Upper Orlando. Upper Orlando. I was really trying to catch that Southern Orlando, but I guess uh, you know it just didn't work out right. You ever you ever stop and think about the wild diversity of accents? In America, specifically, in America is what I'm talking about here. And you've got got a nice southern accent, your southern drawl. And you have subsections of these accents. Well, of course, but this is your opportunity to demonstrate for us. Southern drawl? Yeah. 
Give us a good southern draw. Oh man, I'm, I'm from Kentucky, so it should be easier. To... <laughs> it's always tougher on the spot. It is on the, it is tougher on the spot. Okay, but southern accent. Uh, I got my British one in my mind. <laughs> you head out to the barn there, boy, and see if them pigs don't need any more feed. Well, now you go on down. You fetch me up some goddamn rope, and you take care of that damn horse. And you know what? If you don't wash that fucking horse <laughs> while you're out there, I swear on my life, I will beat you within an inch of yours, boy. Am I good shorts in the washing machine? <laughs> washing, that my, my stepdad always got me. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our Twinkie Wiener sandwiches, and we have the commemorative chocolate-covered Twinkie Wiener sandwich. Jesus. Which we will cut into thirds. Alright, who's taking bets on whether we shit ourselves <laughs> or don't shit for a week? <laughs> it's only one. Like, I would hope we, this would not plug me up. Shall we take a photograph of the, uh, this is, this is more than I signed on for, boys. Yeah, me too, and I'm part of this. Oh my god. This album's killing it, though. They got that... They got a little funky <laughs> thing going on. Yeah, man. <laughs> There was a concert I was going to go to this weekend in Cleveland to see Black Dahlia Murder and Flesh God Apocalypse, which I think is just the coolest name that for a band I've cool ever heard. I thought of a great one the other day. Don't steal it. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like a, a metal band, like a death metal band, call them Massacaroni and Cheese. Massacaroni. That's, that's delightful. That's awesome. Have you heard of Party Cannon? No. They've, the they've got like, you know that colorful balloon font that you can use? Mm -hmm. They've got their name written in that and they're really, <laughs> really super heavy death, death metal. Wow. That kind of juxtaposition has always been funny to me. Right? Right? I probably will not eat this chocolate one. Oh my god. Not even a taste? Because I guarantee you. I bet it's going to be better tasting than the other ones. The chocolate, is this Hershey's chocolate? It's a fondue chocolate. Fondue chocolate. It's not fudge. It's very sweet, but very dark. Just the way I like them. Sweet, dark, and sucky and dry. Let me finish this beer here. And, uh, should we get beers number twos? Beer number two. Beers number twos? Beers number twos. I have those at the ready in case this is god awful. I'm with that. I like that idea. Let's do that. I like that Shall idea. Shall we uh, go with our second sponsor? Um, yeah, I reckon we can uh, we'll take a short break. A little early in the program, but you know, early. With the technical difficulties getting in with this Hanson was nice. We're all a little uh, we're a little hungry. We're uh, we're gonna grab our second beers and uh, take a short break and uh, take a word from our sponsor. Ah uh, man, I think we're safe. But they did it wrong. Oh crap, we were wrong. Two friends taking the trip of a lifetime. Man, this is the trip of a lifetime. They never expected this. I didn't expect this at all. This summer, from Miramax, a Jeffrey Nevis production. Directed by Sybil Shepard. Starring Christopher Watkins as Frank. Yeah, I'm Frank. You are Carlos Carlos as Matt. Hey man, it's me, Matt. And introducing Richard Dick as the hard-nosed detective with an axe to grind. You two are really screwing things up. Boy, have I got an axe to grind. Can you solve the case before the big twist? But, but I didn't think murder happened in Thailand. You better pray this train ends up in Bangkok. Oh, man, it's Thailand. <laughs> Am I right? He's got a gun. Jesus Christ, I'm on vacation. Dead in Bangkok. Coming to a theater.
<laughs> and we're back. Oh, yeah. We decided to take an uh, impromptu uh, dance break, I guess, along with our sponsor break. I've been learning that dance for the past seven years. I can't dance, and we can't dance. For the I... record, he was twerking. He just yeah. got his ass real low and shook it up. He and did. Down. That's all. He got low. Shorty got seven low. Seven years worth of training. Shorty got low. And that's what I got, yeah, and it really worked like loops. Yeah, no, you gotta keep them warm though, keep them nice and round as well. That's right. So, uh, we got beers number two, Sears. Beers number two is... Now, uh, we're going again with the, uh, blueberry maple. That's right. We're going to try our Twinkie Wiener sandwich. Oh my no God. pressure on finishing the thing, but, uh, and it just, uh, you do what you got to do. But for the record, whoever <laughs> doesn't finish it, he's a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually fact. That's that's written in the Everybody has the, the whole sandwich and then one slice of chocolate. Oh lord! There's For three the, slices and three sandwiches. It's my, perfect. Mind you, this is my dinner, so. Uh, so well, you got the smallest one toward you. So how about we look? He's always had the smallest one. <laughs> straight out, straight hey, up. Hey, it's I'm perfect. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a warm heart, folks, and the love of a good woman. Man. And if anybody out there they, uh, they can't see uh, Travis's sandal is his bottle opener and actually going to be mine as well. And I'm still using a lighter because I like science. Science. Hey, What's si it ever done for me? Science put this bottle opener in my flip flop. That's right. Some engineer somewhere designed a way to put a bottle opener in a flip flop. He that got was a promotion worth, for this idea. That was worth that, Masters. Yeah. He got a promotion for that idea. Don't you judge. <laughs> He's now making forty-seven thousand dollars a year. Now making forty-seven five. I tell you, this beer does grow on you. It's definitely it a good, uh, tasty. Uh... I was gonna go with uh, purple haze. Mm. That's always my go-to when I just want to get something delicious but palatable for the masses. Yes. Purple haze, a, you just can't go wrong. That's a go-to in any variety of substance. Mm. But then I ran into this and I just I couldn't resist. Also an excellent choice. Very nice. All I right, mean, boys, are we gonna try the Twinkie Wiener sandwich? I suppose we're going to try the Twinkie Wiener sandwich because it's right. still sitting in front of us. Oh my god! Uh, it's not gonna go away unless we eat. I it feel like it's a lot of cheese whiz. So, uh, the one stripe. That's the. Uh, it calls for one single stripe. Uh, do we want to <laughs> touch? Uh, do we cheers for it? Is touch wieners? Are we gonna touch wieners, <laughs> guys? Let's go. You're not gonna touch say it. I will. <laughs> I taste the hot dog more than anything. That way? That way? Um, I definitely taste the cheese. The sweetness That's kind of tough to get down, guys. I'm not going to lie here. <laughs> no. And you had to gnaw on yours because that skin was not coming off. <laughs> it started coming apart on me. I just had to bite. I had oh. to bite for everything I was worth. <laughs> I can do it. It's. I've had worse. I would never eat one of these again. That's for sure. I'm no, not gonna grow. I can think I can get a little smarter with what I can put inside this Twinkie. I, I think I'd prefer to put it through a blender and just drink it with me <laughs> behind it. <laughs> like, just get this thing as down as fast as possible. So, who's, gonna do, who's gonna dip it in that brew? I'm not. You gonna dip, dip it in your Fuck brew? Fuck it. <laughs> Damn it, now I gotta do it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm a pussy. Me too. <laughs> it's like a sweet bologna sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like the who's like, I'm gonna put Twinkie cream on my bologna sandwich and fry the bologna. Too much salt. Too much salt with the uh, cheese whiz. Oh gosh. Honestly, I think if it didn't have the cheese whiz, it'd be a little more manageable. I agree. I think you can almost do it because, uh... I think I would rather remove the hot dog and replace it with its equal mass of cheese whiz <laughs> than eat that fucking hot dog again. <laughs> oh, Travis is crying over here. <laughs> That's so bad. I think, I think he almost threw up, honestly. I did. It's, I tend to swallow three times on the same bite. It was rough. <laughs> I've seen this guy eat an entire dozen of Krispy Kreme at three in the morning. Without hesitation. And mind you, there was no money on the line here. We just did that to uh, satisfy our own curiosity. Oh, don't worry. There was a favor. 
I think Holly ate the least, though. Uh, probably. So technically. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the bigger <laughs> pussy of all of you. It's okay, y'all. It's okay. Nobody's... Hey, me. I paid like $8 for these Twinkies. I just had to supply the hot dogs. So I just don't get to eat meat for it. <laughs> They cut bologna, bro. All right, well, it's time for dessert. We got to do it. Just chug it back. No, dude. You're not going to do it? Hell no. Hell no. I know on. what the first one was like. Why am I going to eat the chocolate-covered one? Oh, my gosh. Just watching that made me want to throw a hot dog. So, apparently, Josh is the cool one who, who likes to eat garbage. <laughs> I grew up on garbage. I am garbage. Because <laughs> he has to eat the Twinkie Wiener sandwich covered in chocolate. Chocolate. And uh, me and Travis are both saying, screw that. This is, is where... Is it better or worse? <laughs> This is why I agree with Travis on the hot dog and not needing to be there. <laughs> <laughs> if it was just going to hot dog, I think I could do it. But it's too much involved with the texture as well. Yeah, yeah. That hot dog, it was tough too. Yeah. The skin was just hanging on. <laughs> hanging by a thread, y'all. The second bite made me fight for it just as much. Dude. Yeah. No, so, um, not a good idea. Mine bit easy, but it was not easy to chew or swallow. Take your complaints. To Weird Al on Twitter. There's some Twinkie around it though, it's still okay. Yeah, I'm gonna eat that part of the Twinkie, it kinda cleanses my palate. Uh, I can't really, uh... The beer's actually doing that really well. And the beer was actually okay with it, just comparatively, I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just dip a Twinkie in it, I don't really drink beer like this. Let's, uh, let's not just eat random stuff on a show like that anymore. <laughs> Next week Next on... week, ketchup on spaghetti noodles. <laughs> oh. With chorizo. Well, it's okay. Not bad. It doesn't, that doesn't sound that bad, does it? Bad. You add the chorizo, everything's a little different. You ever actually like looked up what chorizo is? Have you ever looked up what hot dogs is? I have. Okay. My point is, uh, <laughs> is garbage then. Because I love hot dogs, it's not inside of... Uh, chorizo is like pepperoni. It's like pepperoni kind sausage. Of, like I bought a pack at the store once and I love chorizo at the Mexican restaurant. In, uh, I bought some, and it's like lymph nodes and salivary glands. Hell yeah! I was like, what? Yep, you ever wonder, what do they do with the chicken brains and the chicken tongues and sh chorizo? It's, ooh, nice. Meat is meat. It's great with eggs, I would give it that. If it's spicy, you got some eggs and tortillas. Pork brains used to be the, the craze years ago. There's mm. a word for that, I forget what it is though. But they have brains and eggs, and I guess it'd be like a grayish color, and they would eat it up and they say it tasted so good. Mm. And uh, I'm just like, ah. Oh. But what's it matter? It's just meat. Is that Salzen? I, 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 maybe. I don't know. I, I get why they do it, but liver, to me, has always been a weird thing to pick out and choose. And I understand there, there's vitamins that are present there. There's there's certain qualities about that liver that are desirable just from a nutritional standpoint. It's weird to me. Goose liver, foie gras. Is that one of those things that's what? supposed to be like the tenderest piece of meat you can eat yeah it's a delicacy it's very expensive because mm -hmm. you only get a little bit of liver for a goose and have you ever been around geese they're assholes yeah imagine raising an asshole you've got a kid we've all yes, got kids yes, we yes. all know what it's like to raise an asshole imagine raising a thousand of them you know a thousand assholes a thousand assholes the story of travis manning <laughs> that's what john lennon, that's what john lennon meant by uh now they know how many times how, how uh, what is it? Holes it takes to fill the Albert Hall. Yes. Holes means asshole. Oh, I see. I always pictured a black curtain with teeny tiny pinholes in it. How many holes it, it took to fill Albert Hall? I thought, it was, I thought it, Albert Hall was like a, uh, a, a like an auditorium. It is. <clears throat> and then there's like black curtains and how many holes were in it. Almost like stars. Mm -hmm. I, thought, I thought it was Albert Hall was a guy. <laughs> and it's a commentary on how the modern man is just obsessed with sticking his dick in all kinds of interesting places. That's very it. true. You know what? That's, that's, that's three different uh, interpretations of yeah. one lyric. John I don't trust man. Albert Hall. That's all I'm saying. Albert Hall's a dick. He, he, puts it anyway. he gives me money. He puts it anyway. Like Albert and <laughs> <laughs> Right? I swear to God, you say that one more time. <laughs> Everybody, find a good joke before you drink and just roll with it. Just hang out with different people throughout the night. It's, it's a new joke to them. Same joke over and over and over, new every time. That's every right. It's That's genius. Right. It's so genius. would you say it's something you need? Like a good joke? <laughs> and the love of a good woman. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. And a hot brisket. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I guess I've inside jokes. Have you ever eaten a brisket? Yeah. Have you yeah. ever eaten a brisket on weed? 
I don't think I have. No, man. I don't think I ever have. But I heard if you make your own brisket that you'll never buy a brisket again. That's what I heard on America's Test Kitchen. Y'all listen to that? Kitchen. Oh, like that uh, NPR, NPR thing? Yeah. NPR, yeah. yeah. One guy's too cocky. It's, it's actually a show on PBS. Oh, like they're real people? Yeah, that? yeah, it's real people. I thought it was robots. <laughs> robots with commentary. Yeah, this uh, Hanson's a little more kicking than the knees. It though. really is. is. It's like a dance album. I, I think I just listened to the singles over and over when I was a kid because I don't remember them being this funky. I feel like dancing. He doesn't, have a, bad, he doesn't have a bad rock voice. Not no. really. Pretty high, though. Uh, he's, he's, he doesn't have a bad voice for a girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got that soprano alto thing going. Just like you used to. Just a little So hit those high notes. Not as naturally as Zach Hansen. <laughs> no relation to Beck Hansen. Taylor's the one that sings. That's a uh, Beck, you know, a uh, multi instrumentalist Beck. Mm-hmm. Oh, his last name's Hansen. Beck Beck. Really? Beck Hansen. Beck Beck Hansen. Beck Hansen. Well, this album sold uh, more than 10 million copies worldwide. Diamond is hell. 10 million. Four times platinum in just the U.S. Whoa, so six million outside of the US. That's actually four million, uh, yeah. That's in the actually US. a better feat to me than ten million in the US. Man, that's a lot of damn money. That's less uh, sheeplish. It's like more uh, spread out, diversified bands. And they self produced and self recorded too. And right. they like recorded the all the songs. Of their, uh, <clears throat> independence. They, 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 they wrote all their songs, except a, a few, I guess. It, really? They had writers. Hold on now. I thought it was a family operation, like literally the parents writer. and children. The writer could be like the Uncle Steve. What I'm reading here, it says uh, all songs were written by the Hanson Brothers with additional writers noted in parentheses. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 different extra writers. Hmm. So you know what probably happened, I'm gonna guess? And this is just me speculating wildly on my dad. I bet they hired a writer to come, and either he brought people with him, a team, or he sucked and they went through multiple writers. <laughs> but I bet is, they uh, brought people on to, to one, assist. One of these names is familiar, Desmond Child. If I recall correctly. Can we get our computer expert to look that up? Oh, uh, I've got it. Desmond Child, it's in my brain here, because Desmond Child helped co-write a lot of songs by Kiss and Paul Stanley. All right, all right. Yeah, so they, they Hanson used the same writers that Paul Stanley and Kiss used. That's what I mean. Like, these guys seem like genuine rock artists, in my opinion. Because, like I was saying before, you know, like, uh, certain artists that are pop or R&B or some other genre, like Aretha Franklin, when she did some rocky kind of sound mm-hmm. stuff. And then uh, Michael Jackson, when he kind of went with it, when, like, beat it and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's like... They have the potential to be like true rock artists, but they kind of want to be multi-genre. Or whatever. Yeah, I think that's kind of how it is with it. With like this though, he's like, he could have gone more extra pop with his vocals, or he could have gone slightly more R&B with it, or something outside of the rock genre. But he stuck with the rock genre, but he's got that high pitch like attack of his vocals. Mm-hmm. I think that it, he like a, uh, it's one of those deals like. It, if he was back in the day, like in the late 60s, early 70s, I think they would utilize his voice differently. He mm-hmm. would have been a great rock singer of the era had he been in that time period, that sort of thing. Give us on. give us an era analog. Era analog? Yeah, somebody from the era 70s, 80s will go with who, who you'd like to sound a lot like him. Yeah. I can almost, and I, I know this is going to be controversial as hell, but I can even see like Robert Plant influence on something. And to, but Robert Plant had to go false Edo ish on his vocals a lot of times. A lot of times. And this guy this guy's got natural. He's got very natural attack, and so that makes it seem almost girly. But Robert Plant was going with that feminine approach, mm-hmm. and he just had a good production with it. It was a different time with production in general. It was before the deep 80s. The deep 80s. <laughs> when things kind of went more produced with. Electronic. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So everything had to be a little more precise. Mm hmm. And uh, I think that's what's lost with the art of music nowadays is precision is kind of secondary. I mean, it's still got to be there. You still have to be, you can still got to be a performer. And I've, I've seen some people that I think are probably chumps, like 
some like commercial top 40 people and then I'll see some like raw footage of them performing. I'm like, no, these people are like 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're almost too good. They're yeah. like butt rock good. Right? <laughs> but they're just so precise with like, the, it's just the new way of, it's more scientific. They know exactly what to do. So I got, I got two for you. And let me ask you this one. You got an electronic artist making electronic music with 100% electronic instruments. Not electric drums, but a machine, a computer, mm -hmm. just a computer. And he purposely puts mistakes into his song. He purposely makes something, you know, a tenth of a beat off, plus or minus. Always in a range, maybe randomly, maybe he just throws in some bullshit here just and there. Just adding that human error. Add exactly, because that's what makes it sound to make it seem like, like it has it's got the feel. soul. Yeah, soul. Exactly. Good or bad. For an electronic artist in a, in a genre dominated by hyper precision, even, even in the face of like a swing beat, which is supposed to be a soulful rhythm, just at the 4-4 four, four level. If, he, if they can jazz it up and make it a piece of work, as in they're doing it on purpose, but in a place that feels accidental, but works, mm -hmm. I'm absolutely fine with it. So if, if it doesn't seem like they're faking it. Right. If it doesn't seem forced, then, that, then yeah, I, I, would, I could go for it. But if it becomes too stylistic, and I, it's really interesting you say this because I thought about that whenever the Nirvana track of You Know You're Right was released. I listen to Kurt Cobain's vocals I and I think that it's good, but it's like he's he's doing his version of Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain doing his impression he of Kurt Cobain. He breaks his voice in places that are almost too... Therapeutious. Absolutely. There you go. They're not passionately put there, but it works stylistically for that track. It sounds good, but it's almost too good. The breaks are almost on too on point. The next question I got for you. This comes with a bit of an intro story. I was sitting with my girlfriend about a week ago. We were listening to Spotify, about to go to bed. And she put on the USA Top 50 chart. Right? The most popular 50 songs in America for the radio. Of current? Current. Oh, wow. This is like a week ago. My question for you is, do you ever consistently take a look at contemporary pop music? Uh, as a father of two daughters, absolutely. Because <clears throat> girls seem to know contemporary music better than anybody. And I mean that across the board, and I don't mean that in like a sexist fashion. Mm -hmm. I mean it in a strictly, whatever the girls decide is cool, the guys are following. And that seems to be a lot of the, uh, in terms of the pop movies. Mm -hmm. Sure. Most guys, I'm sure, start listening to country music because that cute girl's listening to country right. music. Yeah. And I've been tempted a few times to potentially listen to some country music, but it's just not my cup of tea yeah. in terms <clears throat> of like contemporary current country music past deal it's a whole other topic we could always talk about that. The only, yeah. my only reference to, to modern pop music is what what they're playing in the commercials if it sounds like crap I know it's modern pop music post Malone heard of it has a lot of potential to be the next greatest artist ever caught up in a genre staying with it too comfortable dead to me in terms of that, if he sticks with what he's doing. You're yeah. right, I have seen like two or three albums of basically the same thing I've all the way through. I've seen that dude pick up a guitar. And, and he's, got, he's got stuff. chops. <laughs> he's got some chops. But he's got this new hip hop thing going. He's got he's the- a SoundCloud rapper, that's what they call it. He's got the, what do you call it with the- Auto-tune? Uh, he's got the auto-tune. Uh, the auto-tunes And it's very yeah. like, and the music's very atmospheric. And it's, Congratulations is a, is, is going to be is, is stuck in my iPod. That is a that's a fantastic piece of work. I yeah. like that song yeah. a lot. Heard other a few other tracks that I'm just like, ah, you're just kind of doing it over and over again. He is. He's found his niche and he's nailing it consistently. A lot of groups do that. Yeah, but you can only do it so much before it just plays itself before out. Yeah, kind of like that. Like they, they never had a, had a niche, don't lie. No, I'll be mean, honest, the beginning of what they did at the time was actually they seemed like a legitimate band. Like, I'm yeah. old enough to remember when Nickelback actually was like a thing that was like not that bad. They were okay with the first album and then the beginning of what was starting to happen. And it just, 
Well, this became lame. Dad Blossomed rock. into photograph. Yeah. 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 Right. And you're just like, but they, they <coughs> like that one shouldn't have gone further than what they did. You know what I mean? They try to make them the next big thing, and it's like, these guys suck. Right. Yeah. These guys need to play bars and stay low key, and they get, they're good musicians, but they're not writing the next big pop record. I think. I think we have witnessed in our lifetimes, but not realized it yet, the death of the generic rock and roll band. Bands like Nickelback, bands like Saliva, all these just very generic sounding, nothing new yeah. about them kind of bands. I think we've witnessed them finally starting to die out. And you're not going to see generic rock. You either see something truly interesting and unique. Feel free to toss in some examples. of had a couple brews at this point so yeah, well, I have too so I'm, I'm, I'm more or less just uh, enjoying the conversation instead of joining it do the pretty nice brews yeah these guys go, the thing is they're only 6% 5% 5% yeah 5%. Oh, oh well that's even 6%, 6%. No, 6% these are 6% and 26 IBU no joke that's so not these bad. are pretty good brews so um what are we talking about? Oh, music. Modern music. music. Interesting. All music. Interesting music. All music. Usually we don't get the conversation this broad and uh, wide, wide ranged. Well, yeah, it's, uh, music is as broad as it gets. It's, I know, it's like right? saying religion. All right. Poop jokes. No. <laughs> no. Like, oh, I know so poop. many poop jokes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and, uh,. There's extremist poop, poop jokes and there's uh, more conservative poop jokes. But hey, let's leave uh, politics out of this. Oh, yes, please, please. Sorry, please. sorry about that, y'all. Shit. <laughs> oh, poop jokes. I like poop jokes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, oh. Tone it down. What's up? What's wrong with you guys? Are you a uh, Tony hey, Dancer? Hey, hey. You're replaceable. Remember that. Oh, I think I just saw Harley dominate Josh. <laughs> I didn't like it, but next he's a big boy. Thing, next thing he does, he's gonna piss on his leg. <laughs> Maybe. I made him eat my Twinkie Wiener sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and I gagged on it. He wouldn't I eat did. the chocolate covered one though. No. We I both gagged. We, we both, both gagged. gagged. <laughs> you guys thought you were real tough guys. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Uh, will we? Will we? Beers number threes? Will Wheaton. Uh, beers the oh. You're like, oh, them. you're asking yes. what Piers number yes. threes is this year, this week, Isaias? Uh, yeah, usually we have a one six pack with a guest, and that's two beers each. The thing with Piers number threes is we don't always get there, but when we do, it's good. It's pretty good. So uh, why don't you boys discuss your favorite Hanson track, and I'll be right back. I haven't really been listening to to catch the the song titles. <laughs> Where's the love? The only correct answer ever <laughs> to that question is where's the love? And it's not enough, I gotta say. It's not enough. I don't know, man. I kind of liked uh, your book. Did you really just look that up right now? You just <laughs> no, Googled Hanson. You know no. that's going to be on your permanent I, record. I was checking my email, bro. The entire government is going to know that you Google Hanson. <sighs> Feel bad. Nah, Feel I will shame. Not. I will not, sir. I will not, sir. Shame. Nope. Unless Chris Hanson's knocking on my door. I do not care. Then you feel the shame. Then you feel the shame. Then you feel the real shame. It's right? called penal. <laughs> Did you say handsome? Hanson. Chris Hanson. No, we didn't say handsome at all. So there's this movie where there's these guys and they're playing hockey, right? And then the Hanson brothers. Have you heard of said film? No. What? Was that actually a story or just like random this words? This is a real thing. Get? It's Slapshot is a 1977 sports comedy film directed by George Roy Hill. Wait, that's gotta be before the Hanson brothers were born. 1977, yeah. I'm sure the parents were probably barely banging at that point. <laughs> what time, what, what year was Isaac Newton Hanson even born? I don't know. Probably 1979. He was 1699. There you go. To like 83. I love that. Dude, you do, you do math quick, bro. Oh, he does, he does math pretty quick. Dang. He's good at multiplying. You're like a computer. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Some sort of new age solar device? What are you? So for the viewers at home, I have brought out the uh, secondary light beer. Hams. America's America's classic, classic premium beer born in the land of the blue waters. Oh, what's that book? Oh, there's a billboard up the road. Hams. And the slogan is, it turns your fridge into a palace. That's their slogan. 
It turns your fridge into a That's pretty uh, bold. Especially considering they're like the keystone light of beer. I think they're smoother. I think smoother. they're lower, aren't they? Uh, they're I, like $2 a 30 pack. Let's just say that I'm assuming that this would be considered the new the new hipster beer. I can't believe neither of you said the keystone light color. is the keystone light Yeah, of it's the new PBR. <laughs> Jeez. Keystone light. The I, new keystone light. Oh. Oh. Keystone's a good camping beer. It is. Starring Paul Newman and Michael Orr. So is Bush. Natural. Natty's. Natural light, though. Don't ever get Natty Ice. No. Have you ever had Natty Ice? Yeah. Oh, my God. Those were some interesting people I hung out with. Trust. Beers. I just finished my other one. Beers. So number three. Beers. 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 Number three. That has no flavor at all. That tastes like hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> These are the kind of hot dogs I can put inside that Twinkie. <clears throat> These are wow. Beers number threes. Beers number threes. Beers number threes. For those for those at home playing the home game, Hams uh, has no flavor at all. Hams <laughs> is void of any flavor, which I actually kind of like. Either that or the the no the no, no 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 maple no. stout you smells are, like hot dogs. You are abs. That's probably your smell breath. it. Your breath is <laughs> oh, oh Lord. it smells like hot dogs. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> now that you mention it. That's that's precisely why I was tasting hot dogs. I guys. think the uh, the name mm. Hams is getting you now all I smell the salted it. meats. Now I smell it. <laughs> can wow. we get? Can I dip some bacon in this? We don't have any bacon, do we? I took all my bacon to work this morning. I uh, shared it with my coworkers. Can I mix a good beer with this? <laughs> Ooh, uh, I'll have that whiskey. Hey, I'm not complaining. Hey, beer's not much flaws. <laughs> you, you are allowed beers to complain flaws. about the temperature of a beer that somebody gives you, not the brand. That's the rule. Yeah, I wasn't complaining okay, about okay, the brand. Okay, okay, so how are you feeling about the temperature? Temperature's yeah, good. Yeah, like Ice cold, I love it. Clinky. Ice cold. Ice cold. I would take that on a hot summer day. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I would say that's a good yard work beer. I would this with cooks. Uh, I would with cooks, yeah. Uh, well, I would take it cooks over the hams, though. I could one-handed mow my grass while I drink this. Right? Yeah. I used to. I still do. But my yard's too big now. Too he's got a big yard, but he's got a big. Oh, do you got like? Too. Do you got like a Roomba for your lawn now? No, you too I good. I do it myself. You're too good for. <laughs> it's lumpy. It takes two hands. <laughs> <laughs> it's really lumpy. <laughs> That's what she yard. said. Oh my god, that's what she said. I swear. <laughs> he says, he says to a lumps, those are like pleasure bumps, right? <laughs> the speed bump on the highway to, to paradise, right? <laughs> I was hanging around a lot of old Let's people see once. Here. Once? They're all dead now. <laughs> that's some morbid humor. I love it. I love it. I love the red, white, and blue too. It's gone now. Way to ruin the, the sentiment. Wow. Let's so see. how do you feel about the studio? <laughs> First time here? I like it. Enjoying the show? Enjoying the album? I lo I'm enjoying the lighting very much. Yeah, we're enjoying your face. Glad it's to very see nice you again. Here. Speak for yourself. Well, we ain't seen it in a while. No, it's true. Uh, Josh told me that you were coming and I got pretty excited because I haven't seen you Most since. Most people do when I come. <laughs> but I haven't seen you since, so... He hasn't seen you since the giant cheeseburger party. The giant oh, cheeseburger party. Oh, that was a big-ass cheeseburger. It was, too. my oh goodness. My I heard over 150 pounds. We got some pretty good tips at that party. We made a lot of money, actually. Did we? Speaking of which, uh, me, Josh, and Travis are used to playing a group together. Josh, we, Travis, and I. Josh, Travis, and I. Who are, you freaking, who are you, freaking Bill Nye? You <laughs> man? Teach me freaking word science, huh? Word science, uh, I love it. I love it. Jesus Christ. The grammar guy. Anyways, I graduated high school, thank you. Did you? I did. I was a super senior, five years. <laughs> the fifth year, I just took a bunch of art classes. Free art. That's what everybody does. It's the best plan, because then you get a nice... It's like, an, it's like a rest year. Before you actually get smacked in the face with the horrible reality of life. Hey, I wish I would have done that now. Yeah. You know, yeah, and I had to take government and econ. That's it. Like, everything else was all filler. I did that, like, every year. Was just, just government and econ? That was it. I just had to have two real classes my last senior year. 
Was it your last CD? <laughs> That's all I'm doing this year, guys. I can't stick around here anymore. Seven years of getting on to me. That's an ultra senior, Josh. That's a little different. I was the Van Wilder of high school. Dude, that's the cool guy, man. Maybe yeah. think about his He just beard. means that he made Green Lantern and nobody really liked him at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Still got paid! <laughs> You're not wrong. Everybody makes fun of Ryan Reynolds for that piece of shit of a movie, but... There's been a lot of shitty movies, let's they face have, it. They have. Way worse than the Green I Lantern. I wish we had, like, a, a, a in memorandum like, film to roll. In memoriam. Crappy movies. Oh, yeah. man. They just let it roll with soft, sad piano music. I want to make that cut. I'll yeah, make it. Have you guys seen Disaster Artist? No, I haven't that heard of it. That new movie about the making of Tommy Wiseau's The Room? No, the I want to. The worst movie ever? No, I've heard great things. Mm, I haven't seen it yet, but I, I downloaded it because I'm a fucking pirate like that. And then... I think Chris the Hansen's one? listening, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He's just worried about pedophiles, not pirates. Hey, he might be looking for pirate pirates. Pirate pedophiles, dude. They download little kids, dude, and then have sex with them. <laughs> download. That should oh, not Lord. be funny. I'm sorry. That should not be funny. Okay, but it's not funny. Up now. <laughs> so let's drink this. Let's, just, let's keep drinking these hot dogs. I'm talking about 3D printers. <laughs> See, <laughs> this is why you try to avoid BS numbers threes. Uh, remember Jackie Paper from Puff the Magic Dragon? It's like that. I like that song. I, I learned it a while ago. I probably remember it. But I'm not gonna play it. Cause Let's I'm go. not that guy. Cause I'd rather play Wonderwall. Oh, you mean the Wonderwall guy? <laughs> oh, do you play the leads? You guys ever listen to Dillinger Escape Plan? No. I listened to them a little bit recently and I really fell in love with one of their songs. Oh, yes? It's really good. Do tell. It's called One of Us is the Killer. Ooh. It's very subdued and then the chorus is very upfront. It's, it, it's a very. And I listened to some more of them more of the music as well it's a very tight song very interesting but the rest of the music is math metal which is oh, just kind of prog metal yeah. and stuff. it's a lot of fun uh not the kind of stuff i listen to every day definitely but it's hmm. math metal yeah i'm playing in a group now and the drummer's a younger guy and he's all like no Ch way you're only like 50. i'm <laughs> I am 47, thank you. And a half. For the sixth year in a row. <laughs> He's an ultra senior 46 year old. That's right, that's right. Dude, I just joined AARP. At 8 o'clock, I bought concert tickets. At 46? <laughs> At 9 o'clock, I got savings for a great haircut. Mm hmm. And pretty soon, he'll be able to rent ultra porn. And you can get a grand slam for only 99 cents. See? Yeah. He may as well be the king. He may as well, the cop is yeah. free. Coffee's free, bro. Free coffee? Let me tell you about the perks of being 47 for six years in a row. <laughs> That's something I could really get into. What the hell are we talking about? I don't know. I was waiting for you to pick it back up. Right? I was really hoping you were going to continue because I was interested, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember because I think it was Josh who interjected. It was Dillinger Escape Plan. That's I was it. talking about Dillinger. Oh, there it is. And, and then that, Math folks. Metal. Math Metal, yes. My drummer is a younger guy. And he's yes. like, check out this cool beat. It's oh, like, our first it's, guest. Yeah, my, our first Colin guest, Banks. Colin Banks. Not Colin Hanks. He's always like, check this out. This beat's like, one, two, one, two, four, one, two, one, 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 two, four, one, two. And I'm like, dude. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I try to get on that level and I just can't. You just gotta smoke more weed. I, probably. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. And that, folks, leads us to the word of the day. Word of the day. Rather late in the program. Yeah, well, I thought we'd get to it, though. I, it's been sitting on the tip of my tongue. Like Prince. Yes. Today's word Angela? is saucer. Saucer. <laughs> Say it the way you want. What is a saucer? A saucer is a small plate that you put under your teacup. What do you think, Travis? What's a saucer to you? A saucer is a small plate that you put under any cup. Or eat little foods off of. Or could it because be just the like... big plates are dirty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I got a sandwich. Oh, there's a saucer available. I'm going to use that. I call those eating at the stove. Nuts. Shit. I either do the dishes or I'm eating off a saucer. There you go. <laughs> and you like steal it from the cat. The next stage is paper towel. <laughs> if you, if you if could be lucky. so lucky. <laughs> the next stage is off the counter. Well, according to the dictionary, it's a noun. A noun, yes. I believe you. A shallow dish typically having a circular indentation in the center. Called it. On which a cup 
is placed. Ooh. Any kind of cup, yes, we'll agree on this. It's actually for the cup. You and your little teacup nipples can fuck right off. Well, let's talk about that. Here we are. Well, we're, at the, we're at the Urban Dictionary <laughs> version of saucers. 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 Or as I like to call them, saucers. Saucers, or what you would call guys getting drunk. Saucers. Why no oh, saucers? I like saucers. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Saucer, saucers. saucers. Okay. It's a saucers party. <laughs> it's a sausage. I yeah, see yeah. what you did there. Well, I mean, every sausage party I've gone to, they've had a lot of really good sausage at these parties. Are we talking about Johnsonville? Or We're talking about like home fresh sausage meats. Sausage meats. <laughs> Beers number oh, three, everybody. Beers number yeah, three. All right, let's clank it. Oh, it's gone. You asshole. All right, saucers according to the Urban Dictionary: the big pink circle around a woman's nipple. Huh? Damn, that chick has some huge saucers. Okay, that was a uh, fucking a. All uh, right. <laughs> or saucers. Aren't they called areolas? Areolas, yeah. Like yeah. that chick has gigantic like areolas. That, that's just one of the downsides. And they're kind of shaped like Jesus. <laughs> Noun, a partner, usually the male, in a sexual relationship in which there is no emotional connection. Sauce is highlighted the ball. The saucer, I get it. He's saucing it. He's, He's giving my it sauce. sauce. He's my saucer right now. But we may become more than that later in a relationship. Well, like a, a, a big plate? Like, listen to me, Beverly. He's my saucer. Brad and I are about to become a spatula. Oh, Brad is totally gay. Ah, shit. You done turned him over. <laughs> you're a spatula. You... No, you're a, you're a spatula. You're a saucer. Watch your mouth. All right, I'm gonna, we're, we're, we're going to play a game. I'm going to read off a word, and you're going to guess the You got one of them phone-holding things? Like, it's called a pops cocket. So you can't just, like, pops hold cocket. it with your so hand? That's, that's the actual word for it. It's a pops cocket. Pops cocket. Oh, pops boy. Cocket. I'm not going to get used to that one. No. See, Welcome to the you future. Pop it, and then you scock it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, of course. That's, all right, that's all right. what I thought. Yeah. What is, and I'll tell you this, it's a noun. What's a narcissistic? A narcissistic? A narcissistic. Not a narcissist? Or... No, not narcissistic? Narcissistic. Narcissistic. Nar a stick that thinks it's better than all the other sticks. That's a good guess. It's not the worst guess you <laughs> could have limb! Guessed. It's a selfie stick. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, yes! Narcissistic! <laughs> exactly. Exactly. How shallow. Alright, alright, alright. Uh, I'm going just off the fucking record here. What? What's a radge packet? A radge packet? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's it's a, it's a Manila envelope because it's a packet that you stuff full of stuff. <laughs> this is all somebody else fly one. <laughs> it's some kind of fucking Australian thing. A guy with angry little man syndrome. <laughs> a radge ah, you packet. Little, yeah, you little radge what? packet. Or yeah, Shayla, yeah, look at that little radge packet. Call me you little radge packet. Be a three, guys. Be a three. Hey, here you are, Packet. You need to. God damn it. All right, you need to hang on. So yes, Hanson, middle of nowhere, it is still playing in the background. Middle of beers number three. Middle of who gives a shit? All right. I'm sorry. I keep reading Urban Dictionary words. Urban Dictionary actually has coffee cups that they're selling. Did you see that? Really? Anything yeah. for a book. They, they print all, some horrible shit on it. And all I'm saying is, whoever's on Pornhub these days, those commentators, you've got my support. Because those comments on those pages are the funniest things. They're always asking about video games. They're always talking about video games. And He's got God of the War in the background. How can he find the time to do this to this and girl? The joke that never, <laughs> and the joke that never gets old... Reported for nudity. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the people like to post uh, PvP videos from different games on there as well, and just fucking call them rape videos. And they put up a oh. PvP video from RuneScape <laughs> or some shit, and you get on, and it's just the future is now, dude. And people are opening up lobbies of like. He's like rooms of where they just film of whatever crap they want to. <clears throat> Postmodernism is real, man, and it's scary. Very it's scary, scary and un hey, unfriendly. Hey, look at that crazy bug that's on my wall. That is a crazy bug on your wall. Oh, I believe that is an earwig. No, that's a silverfish. Yes. Silverfish. That's a good size one too. 
So, Hanson, middle of nowhere. Uh, which, oh my god, it's done. It is done. Actually, there it is not done. There's eight There is eight tracks of silence and then a hidden track. Skip. Track 21 is what you're looking for. I'm going to toss this out there. Josh had to try and change CD players. I'm going to try the Foxy Shazam album again. <laughs> yeah. Well. We're going to skip to the third track, though, because I like it. Travis has got a special track. Close out our night. This will be the last song of the evening. This is part of Foxy Shazam, the uh, band that we started the night out with. The Flamingo and Trigger. The Flamingo Trigger. That's the one. Thanks everybody for coming out tonight. Yeah, thanks to viewers like you. We get to support ourselves to drink some beer that Travis brings us. Yeah. <laughs> Or any other guest that wants to be on the program. Right. If, hey, if, listen. If you want to be on the show and bring us some free beers, just contact us at dudetunesandbrews at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bring us beer, please. And we'll please. get you on the program. You want to be on the program? We got plenty of open space. We'll, we'll give you a hot dog Twinkie sandwich. No, we will not. That no. will not happen again. We might make some tuna casserole next week. No, I'm good on that, too. You don't like tuna casserole? I'm not big on casseroles, bro. Really? Not a big Have casserole. Have you ever eaten my food? Your food? Yeah. I don't I don't make a habit of eating garbage. Oh! <laughs> well, Travis has eaten when I've cooked. Yeah, I have. You made some good food before. Yeah. I make good food. I make good casseroles. You make good food. I've seen you cook He's some food. He fed me when I was hungover before and absolutely desperate for just anything greasy. Oh, uh, yes. This it's man right French here. Toast. I love anything in a skillet. Oh, still, yes. In the love of a good In the woman. love of a good woman. The love of a good cast iron skillet. Our cast iron's in there. I season mine it. every I... time we're washed. You wash that some bitch? I rinse it to wash it. You can't just leave a skillet. All the people are like, this is my great grandmother's skillet. It ain't been washed in a hundred years. Don't don't get confused. You can wash them with soap. Yes. It doesn't take the seasoning. You can off. wash them with heat. You just don't scrub them with a scouring pad. It's true. The best way to clean Let's cast iron. Rest. Best way to clean yes, exactly. Best way to clean cast iron is with coarse sea salt, salt and right. the soft side of a sponge. Good one. That's yeah. I just use a nice scrub brush and regular soap. It cleans them right nice. Make sure you dry them all the way. And then you Every rub them with some oil. Time, I season them. I rub them down with some vegetable oil. Hour in, 450, nice and happy. Every single time. It might come out a little spotty yeah. if it's been iffy or if it went too long without getting washed. Thank you very much, Maggie. <laughs> I swear, she let she hit one of my cast irons from me with water in it. I was so mad. That I, took it was my scrubbing. nine inch, it was my medium. I was so, so upset. I just I don't do that to a guy's it. cast iron. But anyways, we should probably end this episode. Thanks everybody for coming out tonight and uh, enjoying dudes. Tunes. And bros! And uh, that's it for the night. Thanks uh, for joining us. Where the hell is the stop button here? My eyes don't work. Dudes! Dudes! Tunes! And bros! And bros! We're adults! We're dudes! Listen to tunes! Listen to tunes! Try and drink some bros! Drink some bros! We're adults! We're dudes! Listen to tunes! Listen to tunes! And drink some bros! And drink some bros!